king of a monkey. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The king of glory, the king of a monkey. empty ourselves, Lord, and allow you to fill us up, God. And Holy Spirit, we invite you in this place. We love you. We praise you. We honor you, God. In Son's name we pray. Amen. 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 Alrighty. Welcome to... Uh I think we've we've had different flags last week, and then now new flags this week. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Divine. Uh, I know you're probably wondering why we're in this tiny room. There's a wedding this afternoon uh, in the main hall. So normally we'll meet all the way down at the the end of the hallway. It's actually used to be the um, uh, the cafeteria for the high school, but there's uh, plenty of space for us in there. 
there's a heater in there, so next week we'll be over there. Uh, we weren't uh, expecting to have this happen so quickly, but we're still adjusting to the building, so just be patient with us as we, as we go through this. Um, uh, you know, that's one of the things we were talking about is just how, how crazy it is when we, we don't like change, right? And everybody likes to stay in their comfort, including me, because I work packing stuff and I'm like, do we need this, do we need that? And, and so it's, it's just fun stuff. Um, I'm Pastor Mike Petit. Uh, today, uh, Lester is going to be teaching us, Lester Avenato, actually. Um, and so if you want to have your Bibles ready, he's going to be in Philippians chapter eight, uh, chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, and Ezekiel 7. Um, announcements for this week, uh, real simple, we'll be, we'll be over probably in, uh, on this side somewhere. We'll figure that out on Wednesday. Uh, but we'll, uh, Wednesday night service is at 6.30. We do Old Testament on Wednesday night, verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We're in Daniel chapter 7. We'll be in verses 1 through 14. Next week, we'll be back in the book of Mark, and we'll continue to chug along in the book of Mark, verse by verse. And so we'll be in, in Mark chapter 9. So 6.30 here at, uh, at the VFW. Big news, and, and we were waiting. I couldn't tell you all this last week because we were still waiting to see if we were going to get the football stadium. So, uh, Natalia, uh, I, the, the football stadium at Natalia, we're actually going to have an event on April 2nd. I got to get with you too, that reminds me. Because you're either going to host or I need you to do photography because Christ the Far is going to be here. Yeah, yeah. So, we're, we're trying to, depending on Aust if Austin Lanier makes it from Houston. If not, then I, I was like, Lester's a host. He would have to do it. We'll have to let y'all do it. Uh, and so Christ Safari is going to be coming. They actually do uh, gospel worship, and it's, it's uh, a little different because it's really geared more towards the, the young adults and the youth. And, it's, uh, uh, and so Jarrell is going to be there who does spoken word and Christian hip-hop. And we have some other announcements coming, but we're hoping to hear from uh, Lucas from, uh, for that booking. And, and then uh, I talked to Austin in here. Hopefully his, his schedule's opened up. So... We are going to be, uh, we need prayer for this because the provisions, it's not just us putting it on because I know you're probably looking at this going, how are y'all going to do this? It's, there's no way. Actually, uh, there's a partnership of churches that are helping us do this. Uh, any of y'all that are familiar with the Divine Ministerial Fellowship, they're helping out as well. Uh, and so we're, it's the church body coming together. So it's not a Calvary Chapel event. It's a, it's a church event. But it's it's what when you see the advertisement you're going to go is it a church event because we're not advertising to you we know you're going to come we're advertising to the people that haven't been in the church or people that have kind of strayed away from the church that's the whole purpose of it that's something that was put on my heart when i when we first uh planted the church here a year ago was to um was to really look at evangelism and and discipleship uh, that to me is something that's so important and needed so badly right now uh, in the world and so keep that in prayer keep the provisions in prayer we got uh, just the coordination of everything that's happening um, I mean we got 13 people from the Christ Safari group but they do have the, this is a cool thing they do have their own sound their own lighting their own they have everything so we don't have to that's one thing we don't have to worry about which is a big thing and so we're excited about that uh, Calvary Chapel Texas Oklahoma conference is coming up so for Calvary Chapel, we, we get together as a region, uh, all the Calvary Chapels throughout Oklahoma and Texas, and there's quite a bit of them. And so that conference is coming up on March 3rd through the 5th. It's, it's open to everybody this year, so anybody can go. It's normally just for the leaders and the pastors. But Pastor Ron opened it up to everybody this year, so uh, if you have a heart to want to go, just get with me, and I'll, uh, we'll, we'll try to figure out a way to get you there. I know we got a, a pretty big group going. I think Sarah's family, that's eight people right there. So, and also, and they're not here. They're, they're actually driving on their way back with some equipment from Wichita Falls, which is a beautiful drive. Anybody who's driven that west coast, so. Um, the west coast of Texas, you know, uh, that, that side. But uh, tithes and offering, we don't do a formal offering. We leave that between you and more. The tithe box is right over there. Or if you want to tithe, you can do it online at calvarydivine.org, uh, and that's how we leave it. That's between you and God. And so uh, Lester is going to come up, but I wanted to share something with you just about Lester and Melissa. 
I hope that y'all get a chance to, to talk with them today. Um, one of the things that, that we, I, I walked into worship and I realized I need better glasses because I was like, that looks like Lester. It was all fuzzy. And I was like, I th I'm sure that's Melissa's voice, but is that Lester? And then they were at the marriage conference and they were doing worship. It was absolutely uh, beautiful. And um, it's just a, a, an amazing story of God's grace and love and mercy and restoration of, of, of their marriage and their family and, uh, and how much my brother, Joe, how much they help uh, Joe out at Grace Calvary Chapel and what that means to me because I'm still, that's, you know, that's still, um, we, we've been in the foxhole quite a bit, me and Joe, and, and so I, I love the fact that y'all are there. And not only that, they started a B1 ministry, which is a marriage ministry for their church, and so they have a marriage ministry for their church. And so Lester's going to be teaching us today, and uh, why don't you go ahead and come on up, buddy, and you can give us the word, man. God bless you. Hey, good morning, guys. Oh, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Everybody's freezing. I know. It's cold. Just kidding. It is cold. It's chilly. Um, thank you. Uh, thanks, Mike. Thanks for ha having us here. It's, it's so funny. Um, because uh, when Mike had asked me to to come in, uh, first I think he asked me to do worship. I was like, can you do worship on the on the thirteenth? Like, yeah, no problem. I mean, no problem. We could do worship. Uh, uh, and then he, he threw a curveball. He said, hey, do you want to teach also? I said, yeah, sure, why not? I'm thinking, oh, you know what? You know, usually when pastors do that, uh, they're usually gone. They, they go somewhere. I'm like, all right, you know, we can cover for you. We can help out. And then we went to the marriage conference yesterday, and I see Mike there. I'm like, Mike, what are you doing here? I'm thinking, he's going to be out of town, whatever. Or, you know, he's just on vacation, some anniversary or some celebratory something. I, he goes, oh, I'm here at the marriage conference. Interesting. Interesting, you're here and I'm here, all right? So, well, you're kind of local still, all right? Maybe you're gonna stay here in Austin, I'm thinking that. And then after the marriage conference, I, I was looking for Mike, I was gonna ask him about, about today, and he wasn't here, it wasn't there in Austin. I'm like, okay, maybe he went out. Him and Teresa went out, oh, they're enjoying, they're having the time of their life somewhere, just enjoying life, right? Because they're not gonna be at church tomorrow. And then I, I asked Pastor Joe, and Pastor Joe was saying, hey, Lester, we're gonna see you at church tomorrow. I said, no, no, we're going to Divine. He goes, why are you going to Divine? I said, we're doing worship, but I'm teaching. He goes, why are you teaching over there? I said, is Mike not going to be there? He goes, I don't know. I said, is Mike going to be there? My, uh, Joe, he goes, I think he's going to be there. I said, well, then why am I teaching, bro? <laughs> That's what I was asking. I was like, this doesn't make sense to me. But and then I saw him this morning. I'm like, oh, okay, I see how it is. Ranker, this guy. No, I <laughs> just he's taking a break. He's taking a break, no problem. Probably giving you guys a break from, from him because I, I've always known Mike as the, uh, when he used to teach uh, at Grace Calvary Chapel, uh, I would be paying attention to him, just really taking a lot of notes from Mike because he would just be pouring on the word. And as he's teaching, I would be sending messages to my friends and sending them, you guys know what GIFs are? You guys know what those little mo moving photos, mo moving images or like memes or GIFs? I would always send GIFs of Thor and his hammer to my friends and said, this is Mike teaching the word right now. He's just, th have, you, have you ever seen any Thor movies or any Marvel movies? You know how Thor just throws the hammer at you? That's what it feels like when Mike's teaching. He's just throwing the word at you and it's like, oh, it hits you so hard. That's why I see Mike, he is Thor. So, they're probably giving you guys a break, but we, we love Mike and Teresa, she's awesome, Teresa. <laughs> um, They've been a blessing. Uh, they they were really there for us uh, when we first started attending Grace Calvary Chapel, and they were uh, instrumental in, uh, in helping in our, our marriage. Uh, so thank you again, and we're, we're glad and blessed to, to be here. And uh, this morning, uh, we're going to be going over Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, very popular passage of Scripture, and we're going to sort of sneak in, give you guys a sneak peek of Ezekiel 7, because I'll be teaching that on <laughs> Wednesday night. Uh, uh, in, in, at Grace Calvary Chapel. So I was like, you know what? Let me just sneak that in there, give you a sneak preview of Ezekiel chapter 7. So but before we get started, let's open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this time in your word. And Lord, just uh, we, we just want to open up our hearts to you, Lord. And we, we want to be just uh, receptive to you. You just want to soak everything in that you have for each one of us individually, Lord, and that we would apply it into our lives, Father. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. 
If you guys could open up your Bibles, please. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. And Today's what, February 13th? Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Hopefully you guys got something planned uh, for yourselves. But it's also tax refund season, huh? Like, yeah, tax refund. So interesting. And it, it's a time for us, I, I think, to either spend what we get or save what we get. Or maybe you're one of those few, unfortunate few, where you got to pay back. Got to pay back. But it's tax refund season. Normally, I'm expecting a huge refund or some kind of refund. Like, you know, if it's $5, it's $5. I'll spend it at the dollar store. Amazing. But this is a time for us to spend or save. And, and normally, throughout the year, I, and I don't really spend a lot. I don't buy a lot of things. And I only get things for myself on my birthday and on Christmas. Those are the only times I get myself. But it's, I break it down throughout the year. So it's not, a spe- it's not specifically on my birthday, it's not specifically on Christmas. If I get something today, you know, it's for my birthday on August. <laughs> so, but my wife gives me a hard time sometimes when I, when I spend, spend money. I, you know, I tell her, you know what, I only spend on one or two things throughout the year. That's it. And she can tell you that. That's the truth. One or two things throughout the year. But she says those one or two things cost as much as her 100 things throughout the year. But you know what? It's still one or two things. Okay? That's it. So that, that's her complaint uh, 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 with me. But talking about spending, it's, it's a fact of life. Spending money is a, a fact of life. And, and as you grow older, it becomes more of a responsibility. Right? We, we get more money. We earn money. We have to be responsible with what we have and what we've been given. And you're either good at spending or bad. And you can flip that also. <laughs> like, is there a good kind of spending? Is there a bad kind of spending? And But you can really learn from it also because there can be some pretty huge consequences if you are not spending wisely. But there are, can also be huge rewards if you are spending wisely and that's the title for today's message spend wisely spend wisely and again it's appropriate for this season of taxes and i'm not going to talk about it's not going to be a money message this morning it's not going to be a tithing message or anything like that it's not going to be a refund message but it's really spending our time wisely and we're going to touch on philippians and uh philippians a little bit of background on that book the theme of Philippians is joy. It's a book of joy. You want to find, you want to know about joy? Read the book of Philippians. Uh, the author is Paul, the apostle Paul, and he's writing this uh, of all places about writing about joy. He's writing it from prison. Okay, writing it from prison, and he's writing to the church and the believers in Philippi. And I'll go over the teachings real quick, and I'm just going to do uh, you know, go go over the, the bold faced letters here in the in the book. He's teaching about he, uh, thankfulness for the fellowship that he has with the believers. He teaches about uh, Christ being preached through trials and difficulties. He teaches about Christian conduct, the oneness in the church. He also teaches about being light bearers. He's te- he teaches about doing all for Christ and also pressing towards the goal. And towards the end of the book, he's teaching about being united, being joyful, and being in prayer. And again, this is to the believers in the church over there. He's writing to Christians here. He's writing to the believers. And Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 through 9, and I, I read it out of the New King James Version. It says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, If there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me. These do, and the God of peace will be with you. Before I go on, Mike, what's my end time? Oh, Oh, just keep going, huh? Yeah. Because he gives you know, how Joe gives you the sign. Okay, give me the landing sign. (laughs) Land the plane. All right. (laughs) I don't have anywhere to be. Um, all right, all right, I like that. <laughs> Remember Joe's economy of words. <laughs> I got you, I got you, I got you. I could just hear him in my head when I teach his boy. I got you, I got you. So, we're going to be going over three points today. First point is going to be what we've been given. 
Second point is where we spend. Third point is how God wa wants us to invest. What we've been given, where we spend, and then how <coughs> God wants us to <coughs> invest. So what we've been given, as believers, we've got lots of benefits in Christ. Being in Christ, we've got lots of benefits. And, and we're totally blessed. Paul teaches this in Philippians. We've got a lot to be thankful for. Salvation, unconditional love, peace, joy, assurance, grace, mercy, fellowship, all these things. And that's not an exhaustive list. But we, as believers, we've got a lot of benefits being in Christ. And in verse 8, we see Paul, he includes this last statement. Finally, brethren. Finally, brethren. It's, a last, it's almost like a blanket statement that he gives to the church. This is the end of my letter to you. So I want to just cover everything right now in the blanket statement. He's going to wrap up his, uh, his teaching, his letter to them. And he says, whatever things are true, noble, just, Pure, lovely, good report of any virtue, praiseworthy. If anything, all these things here that I'm listening, meditate on them. And they're not difficult to understand. I don't have to go into the, the Greek to, to, to give you guys an explanation of these words. They're very straightforward. Very straightforward. So easy for us to understand. And he says, meditate on these things. Think about them. And I heard yesterday at the marriage conference, uh, one of the pastors, uh, he says... When you see the word meditate, it's not the, the Eastern way of meditation where you're going, oh, no, that's not that kind of meditation. It's not the own way. But it's rather to think, reflect, or to mull over. So we, we see him saying, meditate on it. Think about these things. Mull it over. Reflect on these things. Anything that's true, anything that's noble, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtuous, praiseworthy. Think about them, reflect on them. And the Greek word for meditate is logizum. Logizomai. Okay? Logizomai. I like that one better. That's what it looks like. And that basically means to reckon, to count, compute, calculate, or count over. You know that word reckon? Side note, I've never heard it used until I got here to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon. What? You what? <laughs> yeah, but I still don't know how to use it. In the, in the sentence. But that's what that means. And I thought I'd throw that in there because y'all may be able to understand it. <laughs> and I'm starting to use that y'all now. It's, just come, it's coming naturally. I promised myself no lesson. You can't use y'all. But now I'm using it. Makes sense. <laughs> but that's what that means. To meditate, to reckon, to count, to compute, to calculate, or to count over. It also means to it, muttering ruminating or reflecting and these words uh, it's also uh, just to give you guys a picture of what meditate means it's also uh, you can also consider or compare it to chewing the cud you guys know what that is chewing the cud okay, chewing the cud is basically what cows and sheep do they slowly chew their partly digested food over and over again in their mouth if you've ever seen a cow they just go like that sideways right and they just chew that thing that they've eaten and then what they do is they swallow it and it goes into their first stomach. And after that, it comes back out and they start chewing it again, right? And they regurgitate it and chew it some more. Imagine that. Just to get every nutrient out of it. But it also keeps them very healthy. Okay? And that's what this word means. Meditate. Chew upon it what you've read. What God has spoken to you. <coughs> chew on it. Swallow it. Apply it into your lives. And don't let it go down. Just Bring it back up and say, okay, God, I got this. I, I learned this from you. Okay, I, I, I see. I understand. What else do you want me to do with it? What else do you want me to do with your word that you've given me? Chew it over. Reflect on it. Think on what God has done in your life. Think on what God has done in my life. Think on godly things. And... This, it, it, it's a practical way to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And we see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. It's a very practical way just to be able to think about it. We, and we've been given a lot. We've been given much. And, and it's not our own. Our lives are not our own because we have been given much. 
And we can't forget this or take it lightly. lightly. And when we do this, it allows us to put things into perspective, put our lives into perspective, put our situations into perspective, put our spiritual walks into perspective, put our relationship with Christ into perspective. Because when we say, you know what, my life is not my own, so it belongs to someone else. And when we read the word of God, we understand that our lives, my life, your life belongs to God. He's paid for our lives. In 1 Corinthians, if you're a note taker, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20, in the New King James Version, it says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? And you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Whom you have from God. You were bought in price. You and I were bought at a price. What price was that? It's Jesus paid for our sin because we couldn't pay for it. So our body is not our own. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23 in the New Living Translation says, I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. We are not able to plan our own course. God has our course, our lives. He has it already planned. We are not our own. Acts chapter 20, verse 24. In a New King James Version, it says, But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race <coughs> with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. I do, uh, I do not count my life dear to myself. So I, fi I may finish my race. It's, my life is nothing. It belongs to God. God has given each of us a life to live for him. He has. That's why he bought us. He bought us for a price. We have an opportunity to live for him. We were bought at a price, and our lives are not our own anymore, but to live for him. We got, it's almost like a, a repayment. God, you bought me. I'm going to pay you back, God. I'm going to pay you back. See, we've been given so much, but given so much, not, but how are we spending on what we've been given? How are we, God's given us time. God's given us life. How are we spending our lives today? How are we spending that time? And this is where we're going to get a sneak peek into Ezekiel chapter 7. Uh, that I'll be teaching this this coming Wednesday. Ezekiel, I don't know if you've ever read through the book of Ezekiel, but uh, Ezekiel is pretty, I, I don't want to say colorful, but it's a, it's a lot of judgment. Ezekiel was a, 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 a prophet during the Babylonian captivity, and that's the background of it. The Israelites were taken captive by the Babylonians, and they basically lost everything. They have nothing anymore, and they're in captivity. And they've lost everything, and God had allowed it to happen. He even called it. He prophesied it. There were prophecies and there were warnings. God said, this is going to happen if you continue in your ways, in your disobedient ways. And Ezekiel was placed into that captivity as a prophet to speak to the people, to proclaim God's word to them, and saying, guys, destruction more of this is going to happen more bad stuff is going to happen and god used him to proclaim his word in the midst so he's basically in the war zone and in chapter seven god is basically saying to the israelites that's it that's it y'all are done okay it's payback time for the abominations you committed for the sins you committed for the disobedience you committed your end has come and, and those words and those phrases are, are mentioned several times in chapter 7 so you know it's important so you know God means business your end is here and it's not even a future tense your end end will come no he says your end's here it's, it's here it's done you guys didn't listen to me it's too late God means business he was judging him. Judgment was going to come down or came down on the Israelites. But, but why? Why the judgment from a loving God, right? From a patient, long-suffering God. Why the judgment? Well, because the abominations 
you know, of all the abominations committed by the Israelites, God says it's, re- uh, it's time to repay for the abominations. They disobeyed God. They continued in their sinful ways. They didn't put God as their priority. They committed wickedness. They spent their time on things that didn't glorify God. They spent their time in satisfying their flesh. What did they spend their time on? Things not of God. See, see, God had a purpose for this judgment. He had a purpose. He didn't just have a purpose to, I'm going to punish you. There's consequence. No, there was a purpose for that. God is more than just that. In Ezekiel chapter 7, uh, verse 4 and 9, it says, it, it gives us God's purpose. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When all of these things happen to you, you're going to know that I'm the Lord. Because I've called it, God said, I've called it, I've warned you many times. I've sent different prophets to you to warn you, to, to proclaim the truth, to proclaim my word. And now it's going to happen. But now, now that it's going to happen to you, you're going to know that I'm the Lord. You're going to know that I'm busy. You're going to know that I'm in charge. And you're going to know that if you want to get out of this, you need to come and seek me. If you need aid, don't go to anyone else because no one else can help you in this. I can help you in this. Come to me. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. See, God, God wanted the Jews to know that the destruction and calamity that has been warned multiple times, and it wasn't just in the book of Ezekiel. Was, man, go back all, all the other books. Multiple times that the, it was finally going to become a reality. The judgment. It's going to become a reality. And in previous uh, uh, disciplines, the Lord showed, that, showed them pity, showed them mercy, and spared his people. But this judgment that was coming was going to be different. It was going to be different. The Jews had defiled God's land with their sins, and the only way that the land could be cleansed was by punishing the people for their sins. And it was time for repayment. God says, you guys spent your time disobeying me. Now it's, it's payback time. There's time for repayment for the abominations, and the people were going to know it was God's hand. It was, they were going to know it was God's hand that came down upon them, and now it's going to cost them. And I, I like verse 8, going back to Philippians chapter 4. Verse 8 is an awesome, awesome checklist for us, uh, for, for believers. I look for these, when, when we go through scripture, I look for the, the, when it just keeps on going comma, you know, it says a phrase or a word, then the comma, then another one, then the comma, because it's like a checklist, like, okay, how, am I doing this, basically? Are the things I'm spending my time, my time, my talent and treasures on, true? Are they centered around truth? Are the things I'm spending my time, talent and treasures on, noble? Are they just? Are they pure? Are they lovely? Are they, are they of good report? Are they of any virtue? Are they praiseworthy? The things I'm spending my time, my talent, and my treasures on. And, and again, these are not difficult to understand. You don't have to be a, a Greek scholar to understand these words. Like, I don't know what true is. <laughs> I don't know what praiseworthy means. No. It's simple and straightforward. And so... When we look at our lives today, and the things that we're spending our time on, the things we're spending our treasures on, the things we're spending our talent on, social media, how much time do we invest in that? TikToks, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, Twitter, are we investing more time in that than we are investing in things of God? Entertainment. Movies, television shows, man, Mandalorian, Boba Fett, Disney Plus. <laughs> I don't watch any of that. I do. It's a really good show. <laughs> Could be sports. Super Bowl. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Super Bowl is the exception. Just kidding. Entertainment, extracurricular activities. Are we spending more time on that? Investing time, talent, <coughs> treasure on that? Maybe it's socializing. Uh, this past weekend, uh, Melissa and I had a chance to go to uh, uh, an early Valentine's dinner in Austin. 
and I, I Googled uh, top romantic restaurants in Austin because I didn't know anything about Austin. And it, it took us to this place called, uh, uh, it, it was in downtown Austin. And it's like one of those downtown places where there's no parking in the front. You got to find parking all around. And we had reservations and it was fancy. And like the reservations cost us $60. And I'm like, when, when do I have to pay for reservations? Golly, what kind of place is this? And so we get there and we're sitting down the, and uh, we're sitting down I'm like, we're looking around. And I asked Melissa, I don't think I could ever be in this kind of scene. You know, I, I don't see myself in that scene because there's just a lot of people, and I'm not saying it's wrong, but they were just you know, socializing, they were drinking and everything like that, and uh, it was just, it was, a, it was a Friday, was a Friday night? It was a Friday night, so everyone was out, you know, they are dressed all fancy, I'm wearing a t-shirt t and, and just jeans, like, all right, I think we're kind of standing <laughs> out here, you know, but it, it's, I looked at it and said, is this part of a scene that we could be ever... Uh, you know, see ourselves, and Melissa goes, yeah, we did it in California. So no, we did it, not like this, okay? <laughs> but interestingly, en interestingly enough, the place was called, and I don't know how to pronounce this because it's in French. Mm. It's P, okay, the two E's in this word have that little accent that go that way if, you, if you're looking <laughs> that way, okay, that, the accents. But it's P-E-C-H-E. -E. Anyone know French? Okay, I'll say I say it in like a Spanish accent, peche. <laughs> I don't think that's the right word. But I Googled it, and I guess it means sin. <laughs> so it's like, that's the place we went to. All right, that was great. Happy Valentine's. <laughs> but we didn't sin over there, okay? I ate some unique food. It was escargot and quail. Never again. Okay? Yeah. But the socializing, going back to the word here, uh, again, what are we spending our time, our treasures, and talents? In? What are we investing uh, in? In James chapter 4, uh, verse 3 in the New Living Translation, it says, And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what you, gives you pleasure. Where are we spending the life God has given us? Is it on things that glorify him? The things that allow us to grow spiritually, grow closer to him? Or is it things that just give us pleasure? And then don't get me wrong, it's okay. I mean, God's not saying, no, don't spend on yourself, okay? But are we investing more time in those things ra rather than with God or godly things? See, there, there's an obvious negative effect in our spiritual life and relationship with God when we decide to invest on things not of Him. Invest more on things than not of Him. We've all been bought with a price. How should we spend our lives? How should we invest our lives? Where should we invest it in? Well, verse 9 clearly tells us and this is our third point, how God wants us to invest. Verse 9 in chapter 4 of Philippians says, The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. So how does God want us to invest in the things that we've learned? He says, do it. The things that you've learned, things you've received. Paul was setting an example. Paul's writing to the Christians saying, you guys saw this in me. You've heard it in me. You've learned it. You've received it. Now do it. Put it into action. Whatever God's been speaking to you, whatever you've learned from a, a, a spiritually mature person, do it. He was setting the example and he was exhorting the believers to put into action what they've learned. Learned here is cool because learned, when, when I read that word learned, it, it deals with our minds. Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, New King James Version says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your what? Mind. mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Your mind will be transformed. Our minds are transformed. We think differently now. 
Paul says, you've learned these things. The word received deals with our hearts. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 21 to 22 says, And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from, from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Our hearts have been transformed. And when we, re- when we hear God's word, when we learn it, it also goes into our hearts. We receive it. God, I receive what you've told me, and I want to put it into action. So we've learned it, want to put it into action. We've received it in our hearts, we want to put it into action. But he also says, well, you've heard. Our ears, deals with our ears. Revelation, Revelation chapter 3, verse 22. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says in the churches. <clears throat> Easy, right? When we hear God's word. You've heard it. Put it into action. And he gets to what you've, what you've seen or saw. Deals with our eyes. Psalm 119.37. And you can find this all in Psalms. Turn, aw- turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. What are we doing? We've seen how God wants us to, to work. And you know, practically speaking, you know, here, Calvary Divine, what an awesome thing. And, and, and uh, Mike and Teresa just, just planting this church here. And just seeing you guys go from the, the what do you call it, the, what's that center? The Mar- media. Yeah, the media, uh, media center over there. And coming to this building, this facility, and seeing the fellowship grow. Man, what an awesome thing. And, and knowing uh, Mike and Teresa's heart. And I've seen them in, in action at, at Grace Calvary Chapel. They disciple and raise up other believers. I've heard him, I've heard him teach, so I learned from him. I was under his teaching at the School of Ministry, so I learned from him. I, I, I received from him because he would teach from the pulpit. I heard, again, heard him, obviously, because he's teaching. And I saw him in action. He didn't just teach. He put it into action. Like, all right, he needs to serve. He needs to, to be a servant of the people, a servant of the, those sheep of the church. All right, he's going to serve. Same with Teresa. I saw all these things, and it's a great example. And, and same with our, our churches back in California where we grew up. We saw our pastors put into action the words that they've learned. And how they were discipled. And what an awesome thing it would be that the people here at this church, the sheep here uh, at this church, would see Mike and Teresa's example. <clears throat> you know, when, you, when there's an outreach, great example. Look at Mike and Teresa. How are they working? How are they serving? Are they just sitting there and are, do they have chairs on the stage? Hey, look at us. Look at me, you know. When they come in, is there smoke and fireworks when they come in? <laughs> do they have a cape on them? No. They just serve. They're sitting in the background. Last outreach that we had here, they were sitting in the back. They were. Near the sidewalk. I saw them. I took pictures of them. I made sure. Okay, better be serving. No, I didn't do that. But you see them serving all the and just serving, coming here early in the church, setting up, adjusting to change. Those are all godly characteristics that we need to learn from. And it's good. And God is going to bless you with it. God is going to bless his church some more. Putting faith into action. This is what Paul is telling us. Paul's telling the church and the believers. Put your faith into action. Do these things. You've learned it. You've heard it. You've received it. You've seen it. Put it into action. But in order to put these things, you need to invest your time, you need to invest. We need to invest. We need to invest our time in the things of God. And, and, and when we invest in things of God, you know what? We're going to gain more interest. We're going to gain more interest when we invest things. And the more we invest in God, time, treasures, and talent, and anything the things of God, the more we'll gain interest in God and the things of God. I don't, I, don't, I don't like to serve. I don't like to serve. I don't like to set up. Do it some more, and you'll gain more interest in it. You're going to see the joy in serving. Now, I don't, like, I don't like to worship. I don't like to sing. I hate my voice. I sound weird. You probably do, but you know what? You do it unto the Lord, okay? <laughs> the Lord's the one we're worshiping. And you do it some more, and you're going to realize, you know what? This is not for me. This is not for the people around me. This is for God. 
And you're going to gain more interest in worshiping. Like, man, I'm going to listen to more worship songs. The Bible's not interesting in enough. Yeah, it's just boring. <coughs> it's all the words. Find a different translation that you can understand. Ask Pastor, Pastor uh, Mike for the best translation for you. But the more time you invest in it, the more interest you'll get. It. Oh, I'm interested in learning more about the word. I don't want to do evangelism. That's scary. I don't want to talk, tell people about Jesus. How do I approach them? Do it. Step out in faith. Do it some more. And you'll gain more interest in doing it. There's going to be an outreach. Where's that outreach at? What football stadium? Nagaya. Oh, in the Tallinn City. Okay. That way. That way. Just <laughs> well, it may be on the camera. Yeah. Okay. There's going to be an outreach. How can we get involved? How can we participate? How can we help out? Because we, we can't just go there as believers and be just uh, seat warmers or taking up room. No, God wants to use each and every one of you. How? Ask them. Ask God. Ask Mike and Teresa, how can we help? I'm sure they, they oh, they'd love it. <laughs> Said, yeah, I got something for you. <laughs> and whatever it is, all right. Let me help. Putting our faith into action. And going back to verse after 8, are the things that we're doing and investing in, in the things of God, are they true? Yes. If it's godly, yes. Are they noble? Yes. Just, yes. Pure, yes. Lovely, good report, any virtue, praiseworthy. If they are of God and godly things, yes. The answer is yes. And then what? Paul says, do these things and the God of peace will be with you. Isn't that what we want, peace, right? Especially in this time, crazy time. You know? Like what, unknown, what, what are we going to? Uh, uh, yesterday's marriage conference was, uh, uh, what is it? Loving in, the Loving in the last days. And it's talking about things in, in, in the pandemic, you know, things are going crazy. It's not going to be the end. I'm seeing gas prices like California now. Like what in the world is this? Should I go back to California? Nope. But still, I'm seeing $3. Man, that's unheard of here. <laughs> but it says, the God of peace will be with you when you invest in godly things, in the things of God. And I like how uh, Greg Laurie, he has all these cool little phrases that he says. <laughs> Greg Laurie's a, a pastor uh, in California. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Harvest, uh, Harvest Ministries, or Harvest Church over there, or Harvest Crusades. He's the, the main pastor, Greg Laurie. And he had said, you cannot have the peace of God until you first have peace with God. Right? It's one of those Christianese. You can put it as a Christian meme. <laughs> you cannot have the peace of God until you first have peace with God. When we fight or go against the things of God, trying to resist his plan and purpose for our lives, then we won't experience his supernatural peace. The Israelites in Ezekiel chapter 7, they were going against the things of God. They had it made. They were, they were the call, they were people that were called. That says, you're my people. They had it made. All they had to do was obey God. God was going to bless them. But they decided to spend their time on different things. Spend their time on things of the flesh. Spend their time on ungodly things and disobeying God and not listening to Him. Fighting against God. Trying to resist his plan. And when we do that, we won't experience his supernatural peace. We go against it. And this is why God wants us to invest in him. See, he doesn't want judgment upon us. He knows what's best for us. For you and I. He knows what's going to bless us. He knows what's going to be healthy for us. And he says, do these things that you've learned. Here's a checklist. I'm making it simple. All right. Write it on whatever, on your fridge. Am I doing these things? Are there things that we're investing in? Investing time, our treasures, our talents on. Are they godly? If not, I don't know if we should be doing this. Or putting, or putting so much time into it. We have been given much. All of us have been given much. As believers... And, and God's been so, so very faithful, so very faithful to bless us. 
whether it's material things, spiritual things, he, he continues to do so because he loves us. And, you know, and I look back and Mike and Teresa were there when, when we, we first uh, uh, came to uh, Grace Calvary Chapel, came, came to San Antonio. They were there. They, they knew, they were well aware of our situation, our marriage, and our family, how broken it was. You know, and, and, I, and I look back and it's like, man, God, you've done so much, man. You, you play so many awesome people in our lives that it's like, without them, we really couldn't have healed the marriage. We, if we didn't invest our time in that, I mean, granted, we, we did fall a couple of times, you know, we were being dummies, you know, being, being dumb, you know, we didn't want to heed their instructions, whatever, or we just wanted to continue sinning. But when we started put, putting God in the picture and saying, okay, is this, is this what you want, God? This is how you want us to invest our time. He started to bless our family. You know, and then it's not, I'm not talking about monetarily. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about material things. No, he blessed us by restoring my, mine and my wife's marriage. And I told God, God, if, if all you're going to do in my life, when I came, when I came to San Antonio, when God allowed me to come to San Antonio, if all you're going to do in my life is give me back my kids and give me back my marriage, I'm fine. That's all, and everything else is a bonus. If you start to give me friendships again, God, that's cool, but that's not that important to me. If you start, if you give me a, a job, that's cool, but that's not important. Whatever it is, God, just give me back my one relationship with, with the Lord. He did that. You know, he brought me to my knees, broke me. Then he gave me back my kids. I was able to spend every day with them, and then he eventually gave me back my marriage. It's like God, and I, and I look like, man, if I didn't invest in Him and, and the things of it, and just spending time with the Lord, that wouldn't have come. None of this, none of these blessings would have come. Yeah, but I knew that I've been given so much, and it, it was my life that God gave me. And I decided in California, I, I decided to waste it on stupid things. And so God said, all right, I already gave you a lot lesser. I'm going to take it all away. Your marriage and your kids friends, your life. I'm going to take it all away. I said, all right, God, whatever you want to do now. And I, there was a point in my life, like, God, God, I'm done. I, I don't know. I don't know what else. I'm at the bottom. Where do I go? And he, let, he said, let's just come to me. That's it. Seek first the kingdom of God. Okay. Everything else will follow. God first. God first. Everything else will follow. That's what Paul's saying here. Seek God first. Do the things of God and everything else. We're, you're going to be blessed. The peace of God or the God of peace will be with you. Now my question to, to us this morning and even myself, what are we doing with what we have? God's given us so much already. Maybe you're a new believer. God's given you new life. What are you going to do with it? Maybe you're a, a seasoned believer, a veterano. What are we doing with it? How have we become stale? How have we become stagnant? What are we doing with what we, we have? We have been given. Are we being responsible for investing in godly things? Or are we just put that on the side and say, you know what? That only happens on Sundays. That only happens on special church events, on Wednesday nights. I don't, you know, when I'm around Christians. Are we being responsible for investing in godly things? And, and this is where we all need to be wise in how we spend our time, how we spend our treasures, how we spend our talent. Are we spending it wisely? And if it's not on godly things, then you know what? You and I are wasting what we've been given by God. But if it is on godly things, then he's going to continue to bless us, bless you and I, and he'll continue to give us his peace and will continue to be in our lives. And I think that's the place we all want to be. But we need to spend wisely in him. And that's my prayer for y'all this morning, that we would just really invest more in the things of God. Well, let's close in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and 
Great. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord, just uh, to get into your word and to teach it, Father. And Lord, it's, uh, it's always a challenging thing, Lord, just to be exhorted by you. Because we get comfortable in our ways, we get comfortable in our, in our situations, and Lord, we, we don't want to move. Lord, if we are in that comfortable state and that we are in that stagnant state in our spiritual walk, I, I pray, Lord, that you would get us out of there. Make us uncomfortable. Get us moving into the right direction towards you. And, and Lord, even in those areas, Lord, where, Lord, where we're thinking and contemplating and of the things we're probably investing time and treasures and talent on, Lord, that are, that are not of you, I, I pray, Lord, that you would give us the boldness, this, even the strength to get those things out of our lives or lessen the time that we invest in it. And that we would do more things for your glory. That we would be, we would be, we would be obedient to your word. That we wouldn't allow our flesh to take over. Lord, that our desire is to grow closer to you, grow more in you. And Lord, be a light and example in this place you place us in, in this in the circles you place us in. I pray for Calvary Divine, Lord, that you would continue to uh, grow, Lord, that you continue to work in this place, in the hearts of the people, that they would desire, have a, that, that, that yearning, that passion to know more about you, to learn more about you, that it's not just a Sunday thing, it's not just a, a church thing, Lord, but it's a you thing, it's a God thing. Father, we love you so much, and we thank you again for this time. Uh, bless the rest of our day. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Football game. Uh, for me, Georgia already won, so we're good. Yeah, no. uh, but I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday. Something that Pastor Bungie said on that verse yesterday reminded me was focus on truth, not fiction. Focus on the truth of the Word of God. And not fiction. I remembered that when you were teaching that. So praise God. Thank you all so much for coming out. Uh, I know I, I took the week off, but it's actually, I was telling Teresa just yesterday and today to be able to receive the Word of God instead of teaching it all the time is always a, a blessing uh, for me because sometimes I need it too. So uh, so I hope that you all have a wonderful week and we'll be in the heat next week. <laughs> I apologize again for... The shift that was happening is because we did have a, we were supposed to have a wedding or something that was supposed to happen in that room uh, that we were supposed to be in. So I know it was cold. I apologize. Uh, but we'll get y'all make sure that we'll, we'll get here early and have the heat on, have it ready to go. And uh, God bless y'all. And, and the other thing I was thinking, they were, they were the first worship that we had at the church. And I think it was just Court, Donna, and Teresa and me. And then y'all's family came. And that was on Easter weekend, so, you know, praise God. It's just amazing to see what the Lord is continuing to do. <coughs> CalvaryDivine.org, if you need to get a hold of me or you need anything from the church. And if you need to get information on the event, we'll have more of that because uh, that will be coming. So uh, God bless y'all. Y'all have a good one.